It's never fun when a biker gets caught in the rain on the road. That's why this skilled engineer from the Meanwhile in the garage. garage channel decided to solve this problem. He developed a motorcycle cabin that protects the rider from the rain. And now he can be Spawn's sidekick. He's not the first to design something like this. Some companies have been trying to implement it for decades. But why don't motorcycle manufacturers sell bikes with this seemingly useful accessory? It turns out there are some problems. But keep in mind that this channel did this project as a hobby. The idea is to let creativity run free. And the analysis also applies to those other companies that also made these cabin motorcycles. First, he made a wire skeleton, applied polyurethane foam to create the mold, and used polyester filler for a better finish. Then he cut it in half for easier handling and placed the molds in a heat chamber, which, by the way, he built himself using the frame of an old camper and some household heaters. Pretty cool. Then he covered the mold with a polycarbonate sheet, heated it, and applied a vacuum. After that, he connected the parts with a metal structure and created the transparent cockpit. How did it work in practice? It seems to have worked really well. He was able to ride in the rain without getting wet. Now let's see if it's a good idea to apply this concept to other motorcycles. Rainwater is pretty annoying, but a raincoat takes care of most of the problem. It's cheap and easy to carry around. The real hassle though, is the dirty water splashing up from below, either from the wheels or puddles. He managed to cover the front part a bit, but the rest stayed exposed so he could keep his feet on the ground. I think a motorcycle like a scooter with a closed underside would make more sense. Check out these scooter roof kits sold by a company or the monotracer designed in the 1970s. However, it has two small side wheels that extend when the rider comes to a stop. The same goes for the latest version, which is electric, the e-tracer. The lit motor C1, on the other hand, balances itself using two gyroscopes. It's a really cool concept, but the downside is that it adds extra complexity and weight, which reduces efficiency, one of the biggest advantages of a motorcycle. This same channel had already built a cover for a scooter, also with two small side wheels. But it seems they're not very reliable when you need to brake quickly. <laughs> Later on he turned it into a tricycle, which is an interesting idea. In fact, several companies are already using this concept. When it comes to visibility, he didn't install a windshield wiper, so if you want to see anything in heavy rain, you'll need to apply a hydrophobic solution to help water droplets slide off more easily, or just ride at high speed. As for dirt, there's nothing you can do while riding. The Quasar from the 1970s had two windshield wipers. So did the E-Tracer, the Benelli Diva, and the BMW C1. Maybe he will add one in the future. On a conventional motorcycle, you can use your index finger like a wiper blade to clean your helmet visor, or you can simply turn your head slightly from side to side and the wind clears it off. Since this is a DIY project, the cabin wasn't designed to protect the rider in case of an accident. So wearing a helmet is still necessary. The cabin also needs to be made from a special material to prevent it from shattering into large, sharp pieces that could injure the rider. Additionally, it should be easy to remove, at least the sides, so the rider doesn't get trapped in an accident. However, if the structure is reinforced, it could serve as a protective cage. Going back to visibility, another important point is that the enclosed cabin significantly limits the rider's ability to look around or lift their head to scan the road as their helmet would hit the cockpit. In winter, there's a good chance the cockpit will fog up, but you can apply a product to prevent that. On the plus side, it must be great for shielding against the cold wind, especially in the rain. In summer though, if the rain stops, you're stuck with the cabin. You can't just take it off and store it like a raincoat. Well, the Benelli Adiva motorcycle could. But in the case of this bike, things might heat up a bit since motorcycles don't have air conditioning. It may sound strange, but the Monotracer actually did. He says a CD player, air conditioning. In terms of aerodynamics, if the cabin design is improved, it could significantly reduce drag, even outperforming racing bikes. The Monotracer, for example, has a drag coefficient of just 0.19, which is incredibly impressive. A naked bike has a drag coefficient of around 0.7 with a fairing that drops to about 0.55 to 0.6. If it's a sport bike, that makes a big difference since drag increases with the square of speed. But that light he installed on top of the cabin is probably messing up the drag coefficient quite a bit. On the other hand, a closed cabin makes the bike way more susceptible to crosswinds and truck drafts since the air pressure center is much higher. This means crosswinds create a much stronger torque force, making it a lot easier to throw the rider off balance. Even racing bikes struggle with sudden crosswind gusts, not just on the straights, but in the corners too. Phillip Island Circuit in Australia is a well-known example, with strong ocean winds constantly affecting the bikes. So what did you think of this cabin? Check out his channel to see the details. He breaks down how he did it and what went wrong. The guy even built a tank. Thank you for your company and until next time.